everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. Um, yeah, I'm here again with Elijah, and we're at SMBI. You've been a teacher here for quite a while, I don't know, 20-something years. And one of the classes that, that was really impactful for me when I was a student here um, was Principles of Biblical Interpretation. And you described um, a way that of looking at Scripture that was really Good for me, and, and I think you know which one I'm talking about. If you could kind of go over that, the, the person, principle, practice um, concept that you taught in that class. Um, just explain a little bit about what that is. As Anabaptists, we have historically put a lot of emphasis on the practice and what we, how we live that out. Mm -hmm. And that is important. But then we have also, in my growing up years, I heard that taught very strongly that it's not just the practice, but you have to know the principle behind the practice. In other words, you don't want to just teach the next generation that you need to wear a head covering, but you need, they need to understand the biblical principle and the reason behind it. And I think that is, that is very important. I think it was Leroy Yoder who I first heard say that we need to go even further than the principle. We have the practice, how we live. We have the principle, which is the scriptural mandate. But within, we have the person of Christ. Mm -hmm. If we simply focus on the Bible, and someone has accused the Mennonites of making the Bible the fourth person of the Trinity, which obviously is a very wrong concept. I, I'm, I strongly believe in scripture and the principles of scripture, but we need to go beyond scripture to the person of God. So you have the practice, you need to go beyond the practice to the principle, but you need to go beyond the principle to the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you have a, the focus on the person and who he is, then the principles and the practice come out of that. So how, how, do, you, how do you do that? How do you bring the focus? <laughs> like, okay, so, so you're, we're talking like a, a three, three things, and you know, it starts with the person, and out of that is the principle, and from the principle we get our practice. And, and what we... Seem, at least it seems like on the surface, we focus way more on the practice than those other two. How do we bring it back to the person of Jesus? Again, that's not an easy process. And, yeah, yeah. and I, I think that one of the things that has happened, and again, this is a little bit of a historical note, is that the, the Protestant fundamentalist tradition in the United States puts a lot of emphasis on Paul and the epistles of Paul and much less on the Gospels and the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. The Anabaptists, if you, if you look at what they have taught and what they, I remember a, very, a quote that really struck me when I was studying Anabaptist history, it was by Hans Hoot. He, he said something like this, I don't know if I have the quote exactly right, but no one can truly know God unless he follow him in life. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. now we have sometimes emphasized the following in life, but we have to, we have to find the person of Christ and who he was. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fundamentalist Protestant tradition has been get saved. And Paul, Paul is very clear. We're saved by grace through faith. And, and I don't want to minimize that at all. But Jesus Christ said, follow me. And the emphasis of Christ with his disciples was that one of the scriptures, I, and again, I don't remember the verse, but I remember the verse, he, he ordained 12 disciples that they should be with him. And that word mm. with really struck me. The 12, Jesus taught the 12 by his life. And that's, that's what we're going to have to, we're going to have to follow Christ in life. Not just do things in order to look good to people around us, but we've got to get a hold of the person of Christ mm -hmm. and what he's done for us. And then we can go to the Sermon on the Mount, which some people say, well, the Sermon on the Mount, you can't live that. That's for a different dispensation. It's for sometime in the future, in the millennium. So, no, it's not. It's teachings of Christ for you and I today to love our neighbor as ourselves and to, to, uh, to not fight back and... and all those things are things that he wants us to live out today. But it's got to come out of that relationship with Christ and to want to follow him in life. So if, if our focus is just on the practice, it, the, the practice can just become uh, something that becomes kind of a dead, dull, dry flower that's not going to do anything for anybody. 
Yeah. But if it's coming out of a well-watered soil, it's going to be something that's beautiful and attractive for the world around us. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's got to come from a relationship with Christ. Like centered around that. So like you could almost think of it as the core is a relationship with Jesus and then the principles that he taught and then we, then we practice yeah. it. It's almost like a, a three-step process yeah. in a way. Well, in, yeah. in, in, in a sense. And the, the foundation huh. is that relationship with Christ. Uh, Again, fundamentalism, Protestant fundamentalism has, in, in, and I'm oversimplifying it, but sure. they have made the doctrine of believing in Christ the, the key thing. That if you believe in Christ and his death and resurrection, then everything's okay and you get to heaven. Well, yes, that, that, is, that is a key, but it's because of Christ. It's because of what he has done. And the key isn't, the key isn't belief. The key is actually Jesus Christ. And, and when, okay. when we, okay. then it's belief yeah. in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in, a, in an intellectual fact of what Christ has done for you, and then you get saved and do what, you know, then it doesn't really matter how you live. But if you, if you focus on the person of Christ, then you're going to want to find his principles. Yeah. And yeah. then out of those principles, the practices follow. And that's, in a sense, that's really liberating, isn't it? Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, like you said, man, it's like doll flower, you know? <laughs> I mean, if, if it's just like, oh, I'm just doing this because, you know, this is what you're supposed to do kind of thing. Um, it, I, I cannot remember which verse it is, but to, I think it was Paul talking about if, you know, if we're going to be believers in Jesus, we should walk as he walked, you know, live as he mm -hmm. lived, you know? And, and I've heard some, you know, people, or uh, at least some Bible teachers say, you know, like this is, this is a really key element. Like obviously study the scripture, but, but study Jesus. Um, and learn to walk like he walked. With this whole thing, like, you know, the person and then the, the principle and then the practice, um, basically we're talking about the steps to apply in Scripture to our lives, you know, to live like Jesus. What are some pitfalls that, and I'm thinking specifically of Mennonites here, what are some pitfalls that we face when applying Scripture? Well, if we just take what the previous generation has has applied. If we if we take if 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 we take uh, for example in in my growing up years, some of the big issues were that you shouldn't go here or there. I won't name places, but my, my generation had certain things that they decided this is what is best for our group. If we if my generation simply tries to give the next generation what our standards were, it's not going to work because every generation, the generation that today is growing up with something very different, very different dynamics, very different. The world is very different than it was for us. So we're going to have to take, take our walk with Christ and then the principles and then the, the way we practice it may change. Uh, some groups like the Amish have pretty much taken their practices and, and uh, taken about 1920 and stopped right there. And they're still trying uh, to live the way yeah. they did in 1920. What we don't want to do as conservative Mennonites is stop in 2017 and say, here's where we stop and we're going to... because. If we, if we don't adjust the principles to the, to the time period, we're going to wind up uh, and instead, you know, we're going to wind up like in 2090, which I don't think we're going to be around by then, but we'll, we'll wind sure. up the way we'll be viewed as the Amish are today. Um, mm -hmm. But by that, I, I, I'm, I have some, I really respect the Amish in some ways in their, in the way they're living with their families and principles. But mm -hmm. a lot of the Amish that I know, they're not really, they're not living it out of a heart relationship with Jesus Christ. They're focusing a lot more on the practice. We've got to focus on the person of Christ. And then you have the principles. And then, then you're going to be able to, then that will tell you how to live in your culture and in your time. So the practices might change. The practices on a day-by-day -day level might change and year-by-year -year might change. But the principles are going to be the same. And the person, yeah. the person behind it is where you have to have the relationship. And it's so much easier, though, for one generation just to pass on their, their culture, their practices to the next generation and just hand them that instead of hand them the scripture and say, learn to be like Jesus. So if my generation wrestled with these things and, you know, it, it took us 20 or 30 years to where, and, and now by the time, so I'm 50 now, I've got it all figured out. So I just like to hand to the next generation, <laughs> do it the way I do so you don't, no, it's, mm -hmm. it's not going to work that way. They're going to have to wrestle with the issues themselves. Yeah, well, and, the world's changing. Like, there's always a new, new issues that, that are being faced. Yeah, yeah. 
we, we can't, one generation cannot hand a list of practices to the next generation. Mm -hmm. but, but each generation has to be willing to look at the practices in light of mm -hmm. the principles and the person. So maybe instead of handing a list of practices, like this is how we do things, would it be better to hand them a list of principles? Well, yeah, and, and beyond the principles, a dynamic relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. If, that, if, if the next generation can get that from my life, that's what I really, that was what would, what would really bring pleasure and joy to my heart. Mm -hmm. Much more so than to have a church full of people doing all the external things mm -hmm. that I might think might be good. And that's, and that, I will say that's something you did stress a lot in your classes was like real biblical teaching and not necessarily saying this is exactly how, you know, you should live, but more allow the text to say what it's going to say and to follow Jesus. And out of that is how we live. Yeah. And, and that's something that was really impactful for me in your classes was hearing that approach because it is so much easier just to be like, this is just how you should live. You know, here's the practices you should have. Um, yeah. And I, I, I might say this, is, is, in, just to maybe kind of wrap this up, is that if, if you have the person of Christ and you, the, you have dynamic principles, then that does not mean, some people think that if you have the person of Christ and the principles, then that everything else just kind of comes automatically, and well, then I'll Whoa. automatically live out the Christian life. Uh, if that was the case, Paul would never have had to write Ephesians 4, 5, and 6. He spent chapters 1, 2, and 3 on the relationship with Christ. Once you have the relationship, it doesn't mean you're not going to need instruction and help on how to live out the principles. He get, Paul gives very specific things to the people. Hmm. And I think we need specific, we need specific instruction and, and encouragement, but it's got to come out of that hard relationship. But it, it's this, the idea that if you have a relationship with Christ and everything else kind of automatically falls into place, it just, it's too simplified. It doesn't work. It's yeah. hard work. It's, it's, it's hard work. It's you can't just, co of, you yeah. can't just coast along. Hmm. And you've, you've got to dynamically and powerfully, uh, together as a church, look at these issues. Uh, and you're, you're not just, nonconformity and living biblically in the society that we have isn't just going to come automatically and naturally. It's going to be, it's going to be hard work. Yeah, that, that is for sure. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else you would like to, like to add? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I think you covered that. You covered that great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I was yeah. never good at conclusions. <laughs> now I just interrupted you again. <laughs> You're fine. So this, yes. Thank you everyone for watching. And yeah, I, yeah, this has been really good, Elijah. I really appreciate you taking the time, filming some episodes with us and um, bringing a lot of your years of study and teaching um, to this project. We, we really appreciate that. So, yeah, um, if there's something that uh, something you would like to see us cover in a future episode, um, leave a comment down below. Or if there's something that, that we said that didn't make sense, let us know. We'll try to correct it in a future video. So, um, yeah, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one.